have gone too far, mortal. Your life will come to an end in this chamber. Get ready for a blast from the past as Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 has returned. Black Isle Studios has ported this classic ARPG over to PC and also modern day consoles, which goes for Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. This video is not sponsored, but if you're a PC player and would like to support the channel, I do have a GOG store affiliate link below, and I appreciate you guys using that. The current price for Dark Alliance 2 is set at $29.99 US dollars, and it should be out now. But do note that there were some PlayStation Store issues earlier, I'm not sure if that has been resolved yet. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the game and also my first impressions, but the majority of the video will be raw, let's play type gameplay, Chapter markers below. So Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 initially came out way back in 2004, and it's definitely a classic for many, many gamers. This re-release is not really an improvement on the game itself, so don't expect crazy updated graphics or anything like that. In fact, it looks very similar to how it did back in 2004, with the exception of it being more crisp now as it can run at higher resolutions. I played for about four hours up to now, and I've had no major issues with the GOG version, and I've encountered very few bugs, nothing that's really even notable yet. Unfortunately, there is no online multiplayer. I really wish that they found a way to make that possible, but this game is two-player shared screen, split screen co-op like the good old days, and it should work with remote play, and of course, you can also play solo. For PC players, there is of course controller support, and the PS5 controller that I've been using has worked great, minus a few instances where I would be in something like a shop menu, and pressing up and down did not feel as responsive as it should. I did try mouse and keyboard for a couple minutes just to make sure that it worked, and it seemed to be fine, but I think many veteran players would encourage players to use a controller, as that is what this game was initially designed for. The cutscenes in this game and some of the menu screams do not seem to have gotten a visual update in terms of resolution, so just be aware that they might be a little bit on the blurry side, but the game itself is fairly crisp, and for a 2004 game it looks pretty good playing on my 27 inch monitor. Audio quality is not the best, the music's great though, and of course it's very nostalgic. Uh, the game is completely voice acted, but the audio for some of the voice lines was a bit cackly at, or crackly, I don't know what the right word is, um, at certain times. Overall, I thought it was still very playable, just don't expect a 2022 audio experience. Dark Alliance 2 is a bit of a continuation of Dark Alliance 1, but they set it up in a way to where you don't have to have played the first one to be able to jump in and enjoy Dark Alliance 2. There's no character creation, but you do get to choose one of five characters, and these are different characters from the ones that you play in Dark Alliance 1. The choices are Alessia, a human cleric, Borador, a dwarf rogue, Dorn, the human barbarian, Vedra, or Vydra, which is a drow monk, and then Suran, a moon elf necromancer. If you beat the game on, I think, any of the difficulties, you end up unlocking the famed Drist do Erden character, and also you unlock the extreme difficulty level. And if you beat the game on the extreme difficulty, you can then unlock another huge D&D character named Artemis and Treri. I could have gotten it a little bit wrong as to how you unlock those characters, but it's something along those lines. I gotta say that I really do miss the days when games used to give us really cool stuff for achieving difficult things. Dark Alliance 2 is, of course, an action RPG with an old-school hack-and-slash type style, and you'll be fighting your way through monstrous enemies with weapons and spells, and you'll, of course, be looting lots of treasure and also leveling up your hero to learn new attack spells and also gain new proficiencies. Overall, it's a pretty simple system, nothing too complex like a CRPG, but it does still have a lot of cool spells and feats to choose from for each class. And lastly, before I jump into the game here, the basic premise for the start of the story is that an unspeakable evil has returned to the city of Baldur's Gate, and there's been a call for adventurers to help reclaim the city from a dark sorcery that threatens all in its path. Since there are many Baldur's Gate 3 fans on this channel, just note that Baldur's Gate 3 is part of the Baldur's Gate CRPG series, and those are separate games from the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance series, which is what this video is about. It's a little confusing, but nonetheless, they all still share a lot of a similar lore. Time for some gameplay, and what I'm going to do is I'll play for about 15 or 20 minutes with the Barbarian character, and then the last 5 or 10 minutes of the video, I'll switch over to some gameplay of my Necromancer so you can see a little bit of that. Let's do it.
Centuries of conquest and scattered settlements have done nothing to tame the monster-filled reaches of the Western Heartlands. Perhaps it is for this reason that the realm welcomes ambitious adventurers, and Baldur's Gate, its greatest city, calls to them like a siren luring mariners to their doom. Why do they heed the city's song, these brave and wandering souls? Some for the greater good, others for wealth, for power, for glory. Some do not know why themselves. This is such an adventurer's tale. Rumors abound of a dark alliance gathering against Baldur's Gate, of the hateful spirit of Eldrith the Betrayer, of a black tower of onyx in which she seethes and plots. Adventurers flock to the western heartlands to forge their destinies in the fire of battle. Even now, some make their way down the tradeway, moving southwards towards Baldur's Gate. Fortune favors the bold adventurer. Do not falter. Okay, here we go. Let me turn up a couple things. Since I'm not going to be talking that much, I'll turn up sound effects and volume. Okay, there we go. Take a quick look at my barbarian here. We have a hand axe. Cloth armor or unarmored. And we have our list of abilities and feats that we can get for this class specifically. And obviously my necromancer is a lot different. Power attack. Inflict additional damage upon enemies with any melee weapon. We have sprint. Quick burst of running speed. Okay. Let's try out sprint real fast. Oh wow. And then Barbarian Rage, increased to attack damage and armor class. I thought that would be my last fight. I'm Ka'ira, a caravan guard. Well met, fair Ka'ira. Are you wounded badly? Not terribly, no. But I'm grateful for your concern. We were ambushed by the Red Fang Marauders. They took some of us away. Red Fang Marauders. Please, just lend an ear. Some of the Marauders took prisoners into the Trollbark Forest, southwest of here. But most of them continued southeast to Wayfork Village. They're going to raid it. Or burn it. You must help, please. Wait, who are these Marauders? Monsters. Brigands. Mostly goblin kind. They've been raiding around Baldur's Gate for months. The city's soldiers can't find where the lot of them hole up. I see. So, will you help? And I thought I wouldn't find any excitement until I reached the city. I'll help. Then continue down the road until you see a path leading into the trees. It eventually leads into the Trollbark Forest. I'll meet you later in Wayfork Village. And these are my other saves for my Necromancer character. I'll make a new one down here. Don't have the energy. Help me. I'm trying to figure out the controls. I kind of forgot again. <laughs> I don't have the energy. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Now, the sound effects for picking up gold in these uh, classic RPGs is so satisfying. Of barbarian rage. I don't have the energy. Dang, I need a lot of uh, a lot of energy for that. There we go, beast mode. Oh, the rage actually lasts for quite long. 
Enter a state of barbaric rage. While enraged, they'll be unable to block. Okay, let's go ahead. Increase the damage inflicted by a critical hit. Dodge. Enemies are more likely to miss in combat. Toughness. Willpower. I'm going to take Death Blow. If you guys are, if any of you guys are bored from these more martial classes like the Barbarian, uh, I did leave chapter markers below so you can jump ahead to uh, a little bit higher level of necromancy gameplay, which is pretty cool. playing on hard difficulty, but I think the difficulty starts kicking in a little bit later on in the game. It was like that with Dark Alliance 1. can zoom in a little bit. I think I prefer zoomed out, though. I keep pressing the wrong button. can rotate the camera, but you cannot rotate it in certain areas of the city. But the rotation of the camera works quite well. A little slow though, I'm not sure if there's settings to speed it up. two-handed axe. I might miss a couple things on this this uh, gameplay demonstration here because I don't plan on playing this character. I plan on playing my necromancer. Now this is just more so for gameplay demonstration. Loading screens are very quick. <laughs> Look at the raindrops. So a lot of the outdoor areas where there's a lot of uh, vegetation, they usually look worse than the indoor areas in the darker settings. It's like that for a lot of games, especially the older games. looks pretty cool though it definitely definitely has the old school vibe that's for sure
This would be uh, this would be so much fun if they had online multiplayer. Really wish they included that with these. Uh, they're calling it a remaster, and I'm sure it is remastered in several uh, aspects. But like, it's not like a, you're not getting like an entirely updated game with 2022 graphics. So it's more so like a re-release, a PC port, modern console port. I'm not sure how much work it takes to uh, to incorporate online multiplayer in a game like this. I'm sure it's a lot more than most of us expect, but it would really would be something special if we're able to play such a classic game online. It's kind of uh, a little bit of a letdown, I guess you could say. Regardless, though, uh, my first impressions of this game, especially on my Necromancer, which I've played for about three or four hours, are overall pretty good. It's, uh, I think it's great that we're able to, uh... Shit, I keep missing. <laughs> Play these, uh, some of these more classic games which aren't available on... weren't available on PC or the new consoles. To be able to play them now in 2022 is awesome. Let me see if I can get a skill that's a little bit cooler to demonstrate here. An attack that strikes all enemies in front of you. Definitely pick that up. And then we'll uh, assign it to this slot up here. And for those of you guys that don't didn't know you could do this, because I didn't realize it on my Necromancer until somebody uh, during my live stream chat told me. If I hold down L1, it brings up this uh, quick bar menu. And then if I go to the spell selection, I can assign each spell to a different button to make it a little bit easier than having to scroll through things. So let's go ahead and put cleave on L1A. And there we go. your encumbrance levels in this game. You can only carry so much. I'm 51 out of 240, though. Oh. Oh, what did I just do? There we go. Trying to get these guys together and do a little cleave. Oh, I don't have energy, don't I? Damn it. There we go. Oh, I only hit one of them. Shit, I'm about to die. I know the jumping's kind of annoying, but I can't get out of the habit. It seems like you move a little bit faster when you jump, so... Jump spamming is quite common for Dark Alliance players. The game is divided into acts, and this is just the prologue. 
can't remember how many acts in total. I think an average playthrough for people who do the main quest and a little bit of the extras would probably be like 20, 25 hours. And then if you're a completionist, obviously you can spend a lot more. And these games have, have some good re replay, replay value because you can play a different class. There's not like player agency and a lot of permutations and stuff like that, but playing as a different class on a different difficulty and then unlocking, you know, Dristo Urban and Artemis and Trary is worthy of another play, in my opinion. I don't know if they have a gauntlet mode in this game. I know in Dark Alliance 1, when you beat the game, you unlock the gauntlet and you can run through like uh, a really challenging dungeon as Dristo Urden. I don't know if they have that in this game. Nine damage, holy crap. Try the Warhammer now. Battle axe, four to twelve, nice. class a little bit better with the sprint and everything. Kind of speed through this a little bit. Oh shit, I'm out of uh, energy potions. I'm poisoned. Oops, I clicked on the next area. Or the cave. This is where the captives are being held. To show you guys a minute of this area, and then I'm gonna jump over to my necromancer. Oh my god. This actually might be the death of me here. Oh my god. I need my rage. Holy crap. Wow. Okay. Alright, yeah, I'm definitely ending it right there. Pretend you guys didn't see that. Alright, off to the Necromancer. Say hello to my level 5 Moon Elf Necromancer, and I pulled my save point back just a little bit for this video to show you guys the city of Baldur's Gate, too. Hop. Hop. Here's the city. Hop. 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 And then down here Hop. is the tavern. It's not, it ain't no elf song tavern, but it will do. The Purple Worm Inn and Tavern. Okay, I'm just going to go straight for the main quest so we can go to the manor. seek me out come have a seat and we shall drink and sing the day away i'm seeking work you spoke of associates that could use my skills i've two troubling tales to tell firstly there's been a series of kidnappings some victims number among the city's wealthy elite death lies in their future should ransom or rescue not be made 
there has also been a rash of mysterious, grisly murders. There have been some leads, but little progress, and more mutilated corpses turn up each night. So, still interested? You'll I'll investigate well the murders. The citizenry is on edge. The bodies are often left so mutilated that they're unrecognizable. Some witnesses claim to have seen misshapen and contorted figures leaving murder sites, and similar sightings have been reported around Bloodmire Manor. Perhaps you should start your search there. It's on the northeastern side of Baldur's Gate. Bloodmire Manor. It is the home of Luvia Bloodmire, sole heiress uh -huh. to a vast fortune. Many have sent sons there in hopes of marrying Bloodmire Gold, but she turns them all away. She's an eccentric woman. Marauders. All right, I shall return when I find something. Farewell. Okay, to the manor we go, which is to the north east. And I'll show you guys some of these necromancy skills. Pretty powerful class so far. Okay, so we'll start off with summoning my skeleton and give us both shield and haste. Skeleton. Let's have a lot of HP. I can't use my life drain because they are undead, so it won't actually heal me up. I think it still does a little bit of damage, though. Show you guys the skills real fast. Contagion, Dark Possession, and Power, Enervation, which is what that purple spell that I was using. Fear, Flame Arrow, Haste, Life Drain, Acid Arrow, Shield. There's a decent amount to choose from, but you only have so many points, and you can't really grind enemies in this game, so to say. You can't like at least I don't think you can. I don't think you can go back to like the starting area and grind XP. So your choices are kind of important. turn off the damage numbers. Personally, I like them on, though. Oh, crap. I switched up my spells. There we go. Now, my load point where I'm a little bit further than this, I picked up the charm spell, which allows me to charm humanoids and have them fight for me, and it was actually quite useful. Do a little focus fire here. some new enemies here shortly. So 
some ghoul-like creatures up here. See if I can find one of the other enemies. Damn, it's all these, uh... I'm gonna zip ahead here. Must be the next part of the dungeon. Hey, there they are. doing skeleton get in there okay and i'll end it at that for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed the gameplay and thank you so much for watching getting very close to a hundred thousand subscribers so thank you for that and uh if you are feeling like you want to play this game and you're a PC player, I do have my GOG affiliate link below where I make, I don't know, I think 6% commission on your purchase. So thank you guys for those of you that do that. And enjoy your week.